Has anybody in here ever went through something they'd rather not went through? <laughs> Is anybody in this room right now going through something you would just rather not go through if you had the option? I mean, if you could find a way out of it, you would have done got off the exit. Well, I've got news for you. There's only one way out, and that's through. Yes. God doesn't have exit plans. He has through plans. I'm going to say it again. God doesn't have exit plans. He has through plans. We make exit plans. Well, if it don't work, I'll do this. I mean, that's why divorce is rampant. Right. Big smile. Not knocking, it's not the unpardonable sin. God can forgive you and restore your life. But people got that way because they go into something thinking, well, if it don't work, I got an exit. Right. Instead of realizing it's a covenant with God that's more than just a piece of paper. Well, I don't know who this is for today, but my goodness, the Holy Spirit's just, you know, that's why we don't enter into things lightly. Right. Well, you know, when you make a covenant with God, uh, he's the one that decides. He only gives one reason for those. And he decides when they're broke, you don't. And if you break them, there's things that come along with that. Did y'all know that? Amen. This is not in, was not in with my notes. Wait a minute, I didn't have any. <laughs> this is the Holy Spirit reading a couple of people's mail in the room today telling you, come on, quit with the exit plan stuff and get back on with God's plans. It may not be comfortable, but it's his way of doing things. Now, is there anything too hard for God? No. Well, what about that thing that's got you so down in the dumps that you've already given up on? That thing that seems so insurmountable that you can't see a way through, so you've decided to try to ignore it, and you ignored it until it festered, and then it festered and made such a mess that you couldn't deal with it no more. Come on. What's too hard for God? Nothing. If God be for you, who can be against you? That's what the scripture says. Feels good when I say it under the anointing, doesn't it? Right. Then you get three steps out the door and you forget all about it. Right. The Bible says, cast your care upon him, for he careth for you. You ever decided to just keep carrying stuff and you just keep trying to ignore the load? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I said I was fine. Quit asking why. Does something look wrong? I'm fine. Come on. He said, cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. If you didn't know that you were going to be a knucklehead and forget to do that uh, most of the time, he wouldn't have reminded you to do it. Right? Amen. Why is he always going to call me names? I'm just talking to me, man. That's how I talk to myself. Don't be offended. You missed the point. Cast your care upon him, for he cares for you. For you. Now, has anybody in here other than myself ever made a mess and then tried to get God to bless them? No. <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard. I don't know why it just won't work out. Well, it's because it was never his plan, and you're trying to get him to bless it, your plan, instead of just getting back on track with his plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I have plans for you, not to harm you, but to prosper you, to give you a life and a future. Is he a man that he can lie? So he has a plan and a future for your life that's good. He promised you that, did he not? But, you know, he had a plan for Job's life, too. But Job didn't always like the way he went. Come on. Job, did Job end up blessed? Yes. Did Job end up prosperous? Yes. Did he probably enjoy God's plan? No. But it was still God's plan. Amen. You know, in a world today, we're living in the last days, you're surrounded with Job's comforters. Everybody's got some way to tell you something that whatever it is. They, they, they can pick out your wrongs a million miles away and they got three trillion in front of them. 
So first you got to make sure whose plan you're trying to execute. Sometimes those aren't persecutions, they're transgressions. The way of a transgressor is hard. When you get outside the will of God, He will let you be, that grace will come off your life and transgressions will come because God's trying to get you to change course back onto the right heading of a blessed life. Come on. And if you're going, I'm enduring, you're going to be enduring until eternity, until you change course. It ain't going to get no easier. They're going to get harder. So for those of you, you need to change course. You need to get back with God's plans and quit trying to get him to bless your plans. Some of you are here today. Some of you already tuned me out. He offended me. Bless God. I'm not in transgressions. If you're offended by that, I can already promise you you're there. If it ruffled your feathers, you're already there. So quit letting the devil tie you down, double dog tie you down to the thing that's killing you and just get free from the thing today. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. That's what today's message is going to be about. Getting free, staying free, getting rid of the baggage, getting full of joy, getting full of peace, and getting on fire for God. There you go. There's the whole point. But what about when we go through stuff? So we See, we're going to go through persecutions. We're going to go through trials. Jesus went through it, and so did so will you. But I can't tell you how many times I have people tell me they're going through persecutions and they're self-induced. Yeah. Those people I want to change course today so then I can talk to some others that are going through some persecutions, and the answer is still the same for everybody. Give it to Jesus. Change course, for those that need to change course, and then cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. It's not like he's up there going, see, I told you so. That's the wrong image of a father. He's not one up there going, I told you so. You made another mistake. He said, hey, come on, man. I care for you. Would you get rid of that stuff? It's killing you. Even if it's good stuff. I don't know how I'm going to make this happen, that happen, that happen. You know what? You don't. If you could have, you would have. So you're going to have to go to the one who made the whole universe. He's a pretty good guy to start with. And you're going to have to trust him with your life. And trust him that he knows what he's, you're, he's doing. And the Bible says, let the peace of God rule your heart and mind. And you're going to have to go back and figure out where you dropped your peace at, pick the peace back up and start following it to get back on track. Sound good? Sounds good to me. I like it. Now that I've got all the preliminaries mostly out of the way, did you know I'm human too? I know none of you have, it's hard to believe, I know, I just. <laughs> but there's times I catch myself starting to carry a really heavy load. I mean, I'm just senior pastor, dad, Spirit. I mean, I just got a few things on my plate at times, you know. No big deal. Yeah, just, I only got to spend two <laughs> on my toes. No. But I, to this day, have not arrived where I don't catch myself all of a sudden feeling weighted down and that I don't have to go and do a check and make sure that I'm not carrying too much stuff. And then I have to go and give it to my Heavenly Father. And then i got to trust Him and leave it there. Otherwise, it sucks all the joy and all the peace right out of me. And I don't do it intentionally, and I'm not worried. I'm not. I don't have a spirit of worry. I don't have a spirit of fear. I'm just talking about sometimes they're just cares. Cares are not always worries. I can be concerned about something. In case you didn't know it, there's not a person in this room that I'm not concerned about. And I don't have to blow up your phone to blow up heaven's phone for you. Some of you catch that a little more later. Some of you get to know me a little better. And do you know what? You, 
some of, I had some, I take offense at this even though some of you are not always really good kids. You're not great spiritual kids. You don't always turn when I think you should turn and you miss the boat a bunch of times and go around mountains and make messes and you wear this spiritual daddy's heart out. And I get concerned. And if I'm not careful, I can pick up some weight being concerned about you. Come on. And I have to go do what? Cast all my care upon him. Because I'm just his under shepherd. The real shepherd's the one that's got you. I just got to be his mouthpiece and do what he tells me. I do need to contend for you. But ultimately, you're his kids. And he's going to, you know, there comes a, now there's been a few people that I've had to turn over to be buffeted. I didn't enjoy that. But it wasn't my call, it was my boss's call. <coughs> Y'all still with me? Glory. Cool. Well, guess I'll come down there and teach for a little while since y'all look a little shocked that I'm actually preaching this morning. <laughs> we'll see how long I'll stay. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And by the way, for those of you that don't know the Bible, I've just quoted you about 20 scriptures. Deacon has got on to me last week. She said, I read them off so fast, there was no way nobody could keep up. But 1 Corinthians, and then she got into part of my message on her offering teaching again. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 6. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has sent in our hearts to give the light, shined in our hearts, not said, shined in our hearts, to give the light of the knowledge of, of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, this is talking deeply about many things, but how many know we live in a dark world? But if you got Christ in your heart, instead of the darkness affecting you, you should be affecting the darkness. And if you're going to cast your care upon him, you're going to have to learn who you are in Christ. What kind of spiritual authority you have in Christ. That you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Not maybe, not coulda, not shoulda. Now, I want to give you another tip for some of you. And some of you that's watching online. If you're in transgressions, you won't never be able to stand in faith. Because deep down you'll know you're not really right yourself. And every time you try to stand in faith, uh, you're, you, it'll you feel like your legs are buckling out from underneath you. Now, we don't stand in our own faith for the record for those of you that do struggle sometimes. It's not our righteousness, it's Christ's righteousness. But when you know you're an unrepented sin, you know that you truth deep down, you know you don't have a leg to stand on and you know you're in transgressions. You need to repent and turn from that. And line up with the word of God. See what I mean? And then through his righteousness, now you can, Bible says, you can boldly come before the throne right. of grace. Amen? Amen? Boldly. So, he did shine in our hearts, but we have this treasure where? Yeah. In earthen vessels. Do you know what an earthen vessel is? You and me. That means the Ark of the Covenant used to be the thing that held his glory. It used to be the thing where all the power resided, where people were scared to go in because they would die. And God said, I'm going to put it inside my kids who call me dad. That is where this power is going to reside. So once again, when you start realizing this power is in you, then all of those things that the enemy was trying to tear you down and tell you that you couldn't overcome, they really don't seem so insurmountable anymore when the God that made heaven and earth is living in you and the greatest treasure he has, he put inside you. Right now, they're in earthen vessels, me and you. Everybody looking for revival someplace upon the earth and revival is in each one of you. You've just got to learn to fuel the fire. 
So he says, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Because uh, it's his power. How many know if we if we had something to do with it other than being submitted to God and chasing after him with all our own hearts, then we would try to think we had something to do with the power when it's all God's power. That's 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Now look, lots of people quote this next verse. And somehow they never connect the ones before. Everybody, they'll go, yeah, we're in trouble, we're despaired, but we're not destroyed. Well, if you start off knowing that the God that made heaven and earth, his glory is shining in you and in an earthen vessel, it changes how you speak this next verse. Come on. We have this treasure in earthen vessel, this power of creation, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Come on. Lives in, in our mortal bodies. He said, I am... We are troubled on every side. When you're in this world today, everybody, the, the more they watch the news, which by the way, if you've got the news, there's, just turn it off. Get your news source from somebody else. Like the Bible, it's just, it's, it's telling you stuff beforehand. You don't need to read it on someplace else. We are troubled uh, on every side, yet not distressed. See, he said you're going to be troubled. So why are you so shocked? Why are you shocked? Oh, you just don't know, Pastor. I'm so troubled. Well, join the life, hit the club of the last day saints. Okay. But, you know, are we going to concentrate on those things? Or are we going to concentrate that we have this power that raised Jesus from the dead living inside us in this earth and treasure? Inside this earth and vessel. It says, Trouble on every side, yet not distressed. Yet not distressed. You have the ability to be distressed. If you take all those cares on you, how many know you're going to get stressed? And you'll be in distress. And I'm so thankful that we serve a living God and we have a great daddy that when we go, help God, he still shows up. But he's telling us you don't have to get distressed. You're going to be in trouble, but you don't have to be distressed. How many know when, the, when they were in the boat, whenever the storms came and they were all wigged out and Jesus, man, he reprimanded them. They woke him up. They're like, hey, wake up, master. There's storms going on. He said, oh, ye a little faith. Oh, man, what a backhanded smack. How long is it going to be? Listen, he, when he came back, he said, am I going to find faith upon the earth? Faith means we reach over to the unseen realm and we pull that, that, that unseen into the seen by hope. Hope, confidently anticipating the promises of God are yes and amen. I confidently anticipate them. I've got a hold of them. I'm not letting go. And I'm pulling it on over here. You can't distress me. Your greater is he that's for me than he that's against me. You don't know who my God is. See, if they'd known who their God is, they would have known he was with them. He was in the vessel. He's in your vessel. And so many times we're crying help and he goes, I'm with you. And they're going, but the storm, the storm. The storm can only get in if you let it in. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Lots of times people think, you know, I, I hear, I do hear prophetically, God shows me, and they think, well, that's easy for you, Pastor. You've got it all figured out. God showed you all the plans. Man, who lied to you? I'm following his peace the same way you're following. I don't know how he does it all the time. Sometimes he just gives me the big picture and I go, okay, here we go. This is going to be a fun ride. And then, the, then issues will happen. And there's times I get perplexed. I don't understand it. This was your idea. 
But guess what? I'm not going to be stressed. Because he's in the vessel with me. And he ain't never failed and he ain't never going to fail. Because I know one thing. God is faithful. Come on, some of you need to say it this morning. God is faithful. <laughs> some of you are about to get it. But I'm not in despair. I'm persecuted, but not forsaken. Just make sure you're persecuted for God's sake, not persecuted for your own sake. <laughs> Don't die on, a, on, a, on an anthill that God didn't send you to. Come on, some of you that's clicking in your spirit more and more. But even then, when you're persecuted, when you go through things, and there's been some times in my life that I have been. See, the enemy will want you to convince you that you're off out there all alone. Nobody loves you. Everybody hates you. Same way Job was. But guess what? You're, when you do that, you forget who's in the vessel with you. And when you remember who's in the vessel with you, you can be persecuted, but you will never be forsaken. Because God promised and said, I'm with you always. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. So whose lying voice you've been listening to if you're buying into that? Everybody goes through every one of these things. It's not just some weak need Christian who failed that goes through these, these things. It's every blood-bought believer and each one of us are tested at different seasons and different times with each one of these things. And you need to come back the same way David encouraged himself in the Lord. You need to go find the Word of God and encourage yourself and see what it says so you'll start speaking right talking right and looking at things right. I am persecuted but not destroyed. Cast down but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. You know, you can knock me down but you can't take me out. I've been knocked down a few times by the enemy over the last few years. I'm not going to lie. And he's wanted me. He's wanted me to build my camp there and just say, "Well, I guess that's just how it is." But that's not the God I serve. So I'm going to resist. I'm going to stand in faith. I'm going to call those things that aren't as though they are. I'm going to prophesy to my body. I'm going to prophesy to the church, and I'm going to prophesy to your lives, whether you know it or not. I'm going to live and not die to bear the works of the Lord. I have the breath of life in my lungs. And every breath I take is, is renewing me physically, spiritually, emotionally right now in Jesus' name. We'll go on down here. Always bear about the, the, about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered to the death of Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. All flesh man is going to get killed. It's going to, get, it's going to die <coughs> so that Jesus can shine brighter in us. These things we're going through is that our flesh may die, that our spirit may shine even brighter. So quit complaining, moaning, and groaning because you ain't getting it your way. This ain't Burger King. But it is God's King. And He wants you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're blessed and highly favored, walking in all spiritual authority. You're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. But you'll never be a victor when you're always playing the victim. And as long as you're focusing on these things and you carry those cares, you start getting into a victim mentality. And then you try to get something you've already got. What am I saying? Well, you're trying to get victory instead of defend the victory you've already got. 
You're trying to get victory instead of defend the victory you've already got. Well, what do you mean by that? When Jesus went down to hell and whipped Satan, said he meant to show them openly over every spiritual wickedness. Does he have to whip all that again? No. When he gave all authority to, to every believer, does he have to go do that again? No. So you already have it, but the enemy's worked overtime to convince you you didn't. See, the disciples in the boat were, they didn't realize the authority they already had. And they got rebuked for it. But if you remember who's in the vessel with you, you're going to go through times. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to go through some stuff. You will. I hate to break it to you. We're in the last day. But the good news is he's in the ship with you. He's already promised you how it's going to turn out. And you have that vessel. You have that treasure in that earthen vessel with you. And if God's walking around with you, if you really could see all the legions of angels and the God walk around with you and the Holy Spirit with you, you would act different. You would walk different today. You would talk different today. And today I want you to open your eyes and see the greater is he that's for you than he that's with against you. But you may have to cast some cares today. Here lately I've had to cast them a lot myself. i got to remind myself these ain't mine. I, you can have these back. I don't know how you're going to do it, God. You know, not, he doesn't always even fill me in on every detail of his plans. Lord, I don't know how you're going to pay all these bills. Lord, there's only 15 people here today and we need blah, 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 how many thousands of dollars. You know, if I tried figuring all of that out, I would be a madman and that would never happen. I'd be stressed out and we'd be having chicken dinners trying to pay the bills. But we don't have chicken dinners here. We have faith. Amen. And guess what he does? I'll get the number. I don't, by the way, I don't see who gives what. I'll get the number and I'll go, well, I guess we made the record bill. Woo, praise God, we pay all the bills. I don't know how we did it. But he does it. And I don't pick it back up. I don't know, you know. I don't know how he does all of those things. But he does it. But he can't do them until I let go of them. He can't do them until you let go of them. He'll let you hold on to them till now to doomsday if you hold on if you if you want to. Or you can choose and say, God, I'm giving this to you. Well, I did that, Pastor, and he didn't do it fast enough, and I picked it back up again. You know you can worry a thing to death and it won't change a thing. Bible says you can you can't change one hair on your head by word. I mean, look at me, I try. <laughs> Glory. Jump over to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7. For if we walk by faith. So, does that sound like something that automatically happens? No. Second Corinthians 5, 7. For if we walk by faith. So each one of you this morning are going to make a choice when you leave here. Whether or not you're going to realize that the he's in the vessel with you, things are different, and you're going to walk by faith, or you're going to go, boy, that was a good message. Hope he's got something good next week. Well, that doesn't help me any. He really don't know what's going on in my life. Maybe I don't, but God does. And the Word works for everybody that works it. That's what it's talking about right here. For if we walk by faith. That's you working the Word. Reaching over into the unseen realm. Grabbing a hold of it. Having hope. Confidently anticipating the promise of God or yes and amen and pulling that thing right over to the scene realm. And you don't let go until it gets there. <clears throat> For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yeah, and a lot of people know these things, you know, and we talk about Christianese and all that. Uh, you know, most people, they know it, but if you... Most people don't live it out. Let's just be honest. They don't. They don't do those things. And the first few times you do, it's gonna. It's gonna be scary. 
just being real with you. But oh man, it's so rewarding when you start seeing faith work. Woo! Man, what a ride. But you guys keep expecting to apply your faith and then to see something happen. You guys keep expecting to apply your faith and then see something happen. Faith starts working before you ever see anything happening. And if you only put an expectation on what you can see, you're never going to see anything happen. That's why you've got to cast your care upon him. Realize he's in the vessel with you. Stand on faith. And you hold on to the top. If he said it, he's not the man that he can lie, right? He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. So you think you're going to be the first one. Well, I don't know, Pastor. You just don't know. I don't, but God does. And he made you, he designed you. It's amazing to me, though, how many people in the world we live in today can believe everybody else, but they can't believe the Word of God. I mean, they'll believe their co-workers. They'll believe Jimbo on the street that tells them something. They'll believe the news anchor. They'll, they'll believe this person and that person, but they refuse to believe the Word of God. Although they can see it change thousands of people's life, and it's the only one that ever brought them any peace. I didn't intend to preach this. I had a totally different way to go. But the reason why, a lot of times, for one, is pride, because they want to do it their way. And they still want it their way. And you can, and only this whole thing only works. We let God have His perfect way in our life. You can argue doctrine to your blue in the face. It won't change the Word of God one bit. And you can tell people who argue doctrine, they're some of the most miserable people. They have no peace. But they'll die on that doctrine standpoint to, to enable the one thing that they still want to do. Is there anything you're doing right now that's worth the peace and the glory of God? No. I'm talking to just a few select people, but like I talked the other night, you know, I could call you out, I can tell you what all your stuff is, but I found that's not conducive all the time. Right now, I just want you to hear what I'm saying, accept it from the Spirit of God, and decide you're going to change and move on. Amen. Okay? But how many in here today would like to just leave some stuff at the cross? Amen. Me? Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I mean, I don't care if it's, you got to cast your cares on him. I don't care if it's sin. I don't care if it's transgressions. I don't care if it's just concerns as a blood-bought believer. I, I don't really care what it is. But I believe we need to make a massive deposit at the cross today. Come on. I'm talking just leave it all there. Boom! And then let him meet us. And if you'll do that, you know, one of my favorite Bible verses, I've quoted it several millions of times, Romans 15, 13, that the God of hope will not be with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. Well, how many know he'll do that? Anybody here know that? That means he promises joy for the journey. Joy for the journey. He didn't ever say be miserable while you're persecuted. You don't wear misery as a badge of honor. That's from the pits of hell. Come on, John 10, 10 said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I've come, you may have life and have it more abundantly. 
quit walking around like you're really doing something, carrying all that misery around. Flush it, get the joy of the Lord, make a deposit. Would you go ahead and play something, Deacons? We're going to do two things. We're, we're, going to, we're going to do some mass prayer, and then I'm going to have an altar call.